Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 1. And it came to pass the same year, the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year, in the fifth month. Here these are dated. There are dated events in the Bible. And the birthday of Jesus is not one of them. And Hananiah, that's going to be the subject of this chapter, the son of Ezer, the prophet, called the prophet, which was of Gibeah, or Gibeon, stank unto me, Jeremiah, in the house of the Lord, he's in the temple, in the presence of the priests, plural, and of the people, saying, so this is Jeremiah's crew, this is who Jeremiah has been told to go preach to, and we're looking at here is a false prophet. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, Hananiah, speaking, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years, it's sorry that God told Jeremiah 70 years. Two full years will I bring into this place, the temple, all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. Which I said, he's already, Nebuchadnezzar has come into the land three times total. He's taken away things each of the three times. Now Hananiah is saying, in two years it's all coming back. I will bring again this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. He don't ever come back. With all the captives of Judah, that's under uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, and not all the captives because Daniel doesn't come back. Shadrach, Meshach, and Inigo are not mentioned. You see, when we read Daniel, when we read Ezra, we read Nehemiah, and we read Lamentations, and we finished the book of Jeremiah, we see that Hananiah is a false prophet. Then the prophet of Jeremiah said unto the people, I said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priest. All right, Hananiah's already shot his mouth off. So Jeremiah answers. Jeremiah doesn't back away. Jeremiah does not allow this to happen. In the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. That's not your modern liberal teaching today. You don't have a right to defend. You don't have a right to speak up. You got to let everyone have their say and you can't question it. Or you're mean and argative. And I would assume that by the end of this chapter, before the death, Hananiah would have got, you know, offended. Oh well. Recently i just been unfriended by a Christian friend. What? Was it your pastor that told you to unfriend me? Or was it what I said the truth about your pastor? You know? Even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen! <laughs> Look at that. Je Jeremiah amens the false preaching. The Lord do so. The Lord perform thy words which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that carried away captive from Babylon unto this place. Notice Jeremiah didn't say the two years. Jeremiah has already said 70 years. So Jeremiah is taking a false preaching that there was some truth in that false preaching. And Jeremiah has stuck out the proof and laid aside the lie. You know, most of the true, most of what the serpent said to Eve was true. 
only a little tidbit was a lie. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears and in the ears of all the people. Jeremiah still. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied against many countries, against great kingdoms of war and evil and pestilence. You would have uh, Micah, you would have Isaiah and others. The prophet which prophesies of peace, like the Pope, like your lovely dovey preachers, God is love. We got to show everybody love. When the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. Now, two years ain't going to happen. Doesn't happen. Hananiah is a false prophet. You know, realize for a while that Jonah looked like a false prophet? Because the city of Nineveh repented and got right and it was not destroyed. Jonah said it would be destroyed. Many years later, that city was destroyed and Jonah became a, a, a true prophet. And there's one thing we learn in the Bible that we are warned in the Old Testament, we are warned in the Gospels, and we are warned in the church epistles, and we are, we are learned in the, in the Jewish Hebrew epistles, and we are learned in the book of Revelation. There are men and women out there who speak the lie. Paul writes to the carnal church that, that has gotten right in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, that there are ministers of Satan. Jesus said there will be wolves in sheep clothing. Peter speaks about these, these false prophets. Jude speaks about these false prophets. There is the false prophet in the tribulation period. Not everybody who's in the ministry, whatever or no denomination at all, there are false liars out there Speaking, thus saith the Lord, the Lord laid on my heart, or this is what the message I have of God, and they could be lying to you. That we are given the commandment in the King James Bible to study, to show thyself approved unto God, and work with it needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth, and that rightly divine and not to be ashamed is to realize the man that I'm listening to, is he honest or is he a liar? And you can't say the judgment seat of Christ, and you can't say the great white throne. Well, I never knew. Not with a complete 66 books of the Bible. You can't say that. If what they teach does not line up with the Bible, they're liars. You pay no attention to them. If they show great pride and mocking events of the Bible, such as marriage. It's a big joke to them. You can turn them off. You can walk away from them. Yes, I've got men in mind as I'm saying it. Hannah and I is one of them. And he's got an audience, he's got people listening to him, and he's street preaching. He's street preaching before the priests and before the people. So, uh, uh, he's a street preacher, he's got to be right. No. Listen, I believe that, that abortion is a murder, but abortion is not to be preached on the streets. It is worthless. It has no value when Jesus said, preach the gospel, not abortion is murder. Whether that woman thinks abortion is murder or not, she may walk into that clinic and get that baby removed, but if she were to know that Jesus suffered and died for her, and was born, it was was raised three days and three nights according for her, for her sin. Maybe that would change her life and the life of her infant. But to tell her that she's a murderer ain't going to do nothing for her soul, the doctor's soul, and the baby's soul. We're told to preach the gospel, not abortion is murder. That's worthless. That's, that don't belong. And don't say, Stolly say, you know, abortion is murder. But that's not what we're to preach. 
Again, the Laodicean church age gets it all screwed up, gets it all out of whack. Over on the street, we're holding signs, we're preaching, but we're not preaching the gospel. We're preaching other things that values nothing to the soul. Well, you know, we're praying for the, you know, we're out there for the souls of those babies. If those babies die, they go to heaven. What if that mother dies on the operating table? The only thing she heard from you is she's a murderer. And murderers and liars have no have no point in in the in the eternal life. They have their part in the lake of fire burns forever. God ain't gonna work on her heart that she's a murderer. God will work on her heart. Jesus Christ suffered and died for you, was buried and rose again the third day, according to scripture. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be God will work on that heart. Um, yes, I will tell you, you can mark my word. You're out there preaching abortion. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Show me. Give me a Bible. Give me a book. Give me a chapter. Give me a verse. In the King James Bible, we're going out there and preach murder. We're going out there and preach about abortion. I'll give you a verse that says preach about the gospel. I ain't saying abortion's right. I ain't saying abortion's wrong. It's murder. It don't belong on the streets. Satan's got you distracted. Hananiah is a false prophet. He's lying. He's teaching lies. Now, abortion is murder. But it's a sidetrack. Hananiah is a liar. But, you know, if, if you give reverence to, to the queen of heaven, if you listen to our church, we're the one, we're the one great and holy, righteous, baloney church. All the religions say that. The Mormons believe they're the one right church. The the, the Seventh Day Adventists, but you know, if, if you go to church on Sunday, not Saturday, you're of the Antichrist, or you're going to go to hell. Jehovah Witnesses, no, you don't believe, you know, you're the 144,000. One, two, three. You're not. The Catholic Church will excommunicate you out of their church, and you're going to go to hell forever because you made the Pope upset. Hey, listen, those are Hananiahs. Jeremiah 28.10, Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet. Jeremiah, Jeremiah has been wearing those yokes. <laughs> He's standing there. In, I mean, don't you think he looks like an idiot? Jeremiah takes those, I mean, Hananiah takes that yoke off Jeremiah's neck and he breaks it. Now what happens in chapter 10 all the way down to chapter 17, I don't like God for it. I don't like what God does. Whoa, what did he, sacrilege, he don't like, he, what, are we supposed to agree with everything with God? At least I'm being honest. Hananiah walks up to Jeremiah wearing the yokes, he takes off those yokes and he breaks those yokes. And I, I mean, Jer Hananiah got upset, Jeremiah preached against him. And I spank in the presence of all the people again, saying, Thus saith the Lord. Here's a street preacher again. A false street preacher. Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations. There's false street preachers out there. They're called political. They're called Republicans and Democrats. They get out in the street and they preach their, their junk. And they lie to you. All of them lie. I've never known a political candidate has told you everything they promise you they fulfill. That's a liar. They preach. And they do it on the street. Thus say the Lord, even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two fully. Notice how he brought that two years again. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Jeremiah turns around and walks off. I spoke my piece. I spoke the word of God faithfully and true and right. Jeremiah's been preaching the whole time. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet. 
after Hananiah had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, uh, you to God just tapping the shoulder of uh, Jeremiah, where are you going? They're done. They're not listening, God. They're not going to hear. <clears throat> He's got more people than I do. They like his hamburger and hot dogs. You say, what's hamburger and hot dogs got to do with it? I've had people tell me, you know, if I offered hamburgers and hot dogs, people would love me. I know a church ministry that offered me a ministry in a park. They were going to pay for the church. They were going to pay for the for the sound system. They were going to pay for the hamburgers and hot dogs. And everybody from all the rows of the chairs, everybody would pray the sinner's prayer. That's, that's what the guy told me in his office. And I got witnesses. You have to have the hamburger and hot dog first. <laughs> Jeremiah's like, God, they're not listening. <laughs> Look at verse 13. You recognize that first word? Go. Do you know what? Many Christians in the Laodicean church is not doing. Or if they are, go. They're going about the wrong things. That there's, They're going, oh, you know, come to my church. Or we got a fellowship. We're going to have game day. We're going to have, you know, we're going to have a carnival in our church. We're going to have entertainments. We're going to have musical bears and dancing monkeys and all other kinds of nonsense. Go! We're told to go to all the world and preach the gospel. God tells Jeremiah, go. We are go of the children of God in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. We're not told to sit. We're not told to lay down. We're told to go. Jeremiah was going the other way. Jeremiah had to turn around and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. We're going to make it worse. We're going to make it harder. We're going to make it stronger. We're going to make it. Just because of Hananiah, God said, Okay, fine. You broke the wood? I'm going to make it iron. I'm going to put more of a burden on you. And you're, you you ain't going to break the iron. And that, that's one of the things I don't like about God. God will turn the heat on a Christian. God will turn the heat on somebody. God will turn the heat. Because someone else sins. For somebody else's learning. God will put somebody through the fire for somebody else to learn that they may not learn. God may have somebody in the church suffering pain and misery and they put up with that pain and they, 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 they survive the misery and their life is to teach another Christian you can do it, they can. I don't like that about God. And the thing here is, why does all the nations have to suffer? Because of Hananiah. He's the one that broke the yoke, not the nations. I mean, many of the people in Judah are going to follow Hananiah. Very few follow Jeremiah. Very few. I'm saying none do. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. I have put a yoke of iron upon the necks of all these. Thank you, Hananiah. That they may serve the Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Listen, God told Jeremiah, listen, you just give in to the Babylonians, give in to the child doing, just put yourself in that yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, and I'll take care of you. But if you refuse famine, death, war, pestilence. Oh, wood wasn't good enough? 
I'll make it iron now. Thank you, Hananiah. They shall serve him. And I have given him the beast of the field. Now, notice how God keeps saying that beast. What did they do? That's your livestock. That's your possessions, your oxen, your sheep. They're no longer yours. Because of a lying prophet. And you know what will happen to a Christian that listens to a lying prophet, though if that man be saved or that man be lost, the prophet, the preacher, the pastor, the Sunday school teacher? You'll lose gold, silver, precious stones, inheritance, and crowns. You'll get wood, hay, or stubble. Why you're told to study the Bible and, and that guy's not teaching right? You got to get out under that guy and go through. Well, there's nobody else. Well, you got to teach yourself then. You know, the biggest thing they go, you know, Sunday morning, go to church, go to church. What if there is no church? What if there's no biblically sound churches? What are you going to do? You got, you got a family, you got a wife and your children. There is no biblical sound church. What are you supposed to do? You start the church. In your living room. Yeah, I know a lot of see. In the living room? You mean not brand new pews and not, not all kinds of fancy fellowship halls and not kind of, you know, you know. Yeah, yeah. Couch and, oh, and unfancy, un- Comfortable kitchen and dining room table chairs. It's either that or you lose your beast and you lose it all. When you put yourself in the yoke of a false teacher who lies. And they're out there. A dime a dozen, but shipping and handling. Then said the prophet Jeremiah to Hananiah the prophet. The Bible called the Holy Spirit calls him a prophet. He's a lying prophet. Hear now, Hananiah. The Lord has not sent thee. Got it? God allowed him to speak, didn't he? God allowed that man to speak lies to the people twice. God didn't send lightning bolts and fry him. Well, you know, if, if that man in, in my church, that pastor, that's a, if, if God, if God would kill him, no, he won't. He's got a thriving ministry. Yeah, I know he does. Or he may not have a thriving ministry. He may have a lot of people because the world loves him. Or he may have very few in number because they know he's wrong. Or he may have a good side, a proper size ministry. And if he's wrong, he's wrong. And if he's not sent by God, God said, I didn't send him. We need to learn. Right, let's get off the Catholics. Let's get off the Mormon. Let's look at the Baptist churches. There are Baptist churches in the world today. As far as that man in the pulpit, as far as that man in the podium, God says, I didn't send him. Satan did. Or, God said, you know, a long time ago I used that man, but he gave into the world. He got involved with sin. I pulled, listen, that's the story of, um, uh, I can't think of his name now. Billy Graham. Billy Graham was a man of time. And God used that man. God influenced that man. That man preached hell. That man preached salvation. People got saved under the preaching of Billy Graham. And Billy Graham got into politics. And he got in the spotlight. And he got the Coliseum. 
And he got the television cameras. He also got away from hell. He also got away from the King James Bible. He got away from preaching what he ought to have been preaching. I'm not saying Billy Graham's a false. He was a man that did right, was right, was right, and you know he led a lot of circumstances. I'll tell you one thing going on today. If you got a woman preacher, woman pastor, woman teaching the congregation of the church, right there, that's a false prophet because God said a woman's not to usurp the authority uh, over man. God didn't send her. There are ministries where there are men and women. The Lord has not sent me. But, the Lord has not sent thee, but, the Lord has not sent thee, but thou, Ananias, I have not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. What lies are out there? Amillennialism. There's no millennium. We're gonna we're gonna fix everything else that Jesus is gonna come and pat us on the back. If we say this prayer. We walk the aisle, we get baptized, we join the church for salvation. We partake of the Lord's, you know, literal body and blood, literal. We get married to multiple wives and have many have wives and have many children so we can populate outer space. Where Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. When Jesus Christ comes back, the blood that's on his garments is his own blood. That's a lie. Oh, you know, the people in the Old Testament, they are Christians. That's a lie. Acts said they weren't called Christians until they were at Antioch. <laughs> in the Greek, that's a lie. Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Our church is the greatest church of all the great. Uh, that's a lie. Our pastors is the great. That's a lie. Aren't you? I am so glad we're to be in the house of the Lord. To, that's a lie. You're not in the house of the Lord. You're in a building. The building is not the church. Stop calling it the house of the Lord. You got no Ark of the Covenant. You got no cherubim. You got no altar of incense. You, you got no table of showbread. You ain't got no candles. You ain't got no brazen altar. You ain't got the uh, the brazen labor. It ain't the house of the Lord. <coughs> and most of the nonsense, the people that do that, they got such a carnival and, and carnival. <laughs> atmosphere God wouldn't be in that house he's outside imagine they're glad to see in church they saying the house of the Lord the house of the Lord and Jesus Christ is standing outside when even the gospels the temple Jesus was inside the temple in the church age he's standing outside you know in the days of Noah yeah God was inside the ark and said, come in. Jesus Christ is outside the door knocking and said, come out. The Lord has not sent thee, but thou makest his people to trust in a lie. That's some Baptist churches, other denominational churches and undenominational churches. That's religion. But it's also in your Baptist churches. That's also government. The Republicans are the best and only ones to be in part of the government. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. 
Jeremiah is bawling him out by the word of God in front of everybody. And naming names that Jesus did, that Paul did, that Moses did. I just left the church. I'm calling out the names. I'm calling out the sin. I don't want to be my friend. That's fine. You go in with the lies. But I got to say the word allege so they don't sue me. So Paul told the Corinthian church, you're not supposed to sue. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. That sounds good. This year thou shalt die. Hananiah is not even going to see his two years. That don't happen. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. This year thou shalt die because thou taught rebellion, is a lie, verse 15, against the Lord. When you teach the people a lie, they believe a lie you have taught against the Lord. The Lord takes it personally. Paul, why, why persecutest thou me? Paul wasn't persecuting Jesus. When you visited my brethren that were sick and you and you and you took care of them in jail and you took care of their medical need, when do we do it unto you when you did it unto my brother? Now this is what I don't like. All right. Verse 13 says, Go and tell Hanani, thus saith the Lord, thou hast broken the yokes of wood, true, but thou sh shall make for them yokes of iron. Verse 17. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. <laughs> God, you're going to make it worse by iron. And the man that broke the wood is okay, now it's going to be iron. And you killed the guy before his two years are up. That's what I don't understand about the Lord. Now, of all the people in all the nature say, yeah, 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 all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe they were. And maybe that's why God said, okay, I got you guys. Maybe that's why Jeremiah walked away like they're not listening. They're listening to Hananiah. You know, I felt like that with churches. I have stepped out of the churches, left the church like they're not going to listen. And no one has come out of those doors of church. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Scholar, we think you're right. No, I'm absent from all the people that the, the churches I left as such. Maybe the people, maybe, maybe God said, okay, you want to listen to hand on it? Okay. But when you've got a preacher, a pastor, a a, a teacher, Sunday school, whatever that, that they are teaching the lies, and you are adhering to the lies, and not to the man that's teaching right, Don't get upset when God starts giving you a heavy burden, heavy iron, and put you in, a, in heaviness. Because Jeremiah's word was, hey, just go with the flow, do what God tells you to do, and all will be well. And there was rebellion against the word, there was false teaching, False preaching, the guy's okay, fine, I'll make an iron. And the man that was preaching, God said, okay, he's gone. I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you, today in the churches, 
Don't expect that pastor, that teacher. Don't expect God, okay, you know, God's going to kill him off early. No, he won't. Because God is long-suffering. That man may be in the pulpit, in the ministry for years and years and years, waiting for that man to get right and repent and get right. Like Jeremiah and God are waiting for the nation of Judah to get right, repent. And then one day that cup gets filled, one day that cup gets filled, and God's okay, that's it, we're done. And for the Christian, the sorry thing is, if you won't listen to the Word of God, you will know at the judgment seat of Christ what's right and wrong, and that's too late. 